Hello and welcome to this video lecture. I hope you enjoy. So in this video lecture, the aim is to summarize what you have learned so far, to summarize what you need to do until the end of the course, and uh, highlight some key takeaway and aspects to, to understand in this process of evaluating the user experience or doing user research. In the previous uh, sessions, we have focused on understanding the methods and procedures for evaluating the user experience. Now, the goal from now on is to practice and explore and be as free as possible to understand which methods fit better to your research, user research, and which methods should be adjusted to your specific context and, and, and understanding of user's behavior. There are uh, various methods that you can use. You can use metrics to assess user's behavior from a, a physiological perspective. So you can measure bodily, body functions and, and reactions, but you can also use methods to, to uh, measure per, um, perceptions of the user. So what they think, how they perceive the experience to be. And these are uh, usually psychometric and self-reported metrics. But before we do this, I would like to remind, remind you that we already had five sessions. We are going towards our sixth session and we are missing one more. So what we expect from you uh, from this course, um, I hope that you will took part of all individual reading assignments, so all your reading assignments should be done, or uh, at least most of them. Participate in your group assignments and fulfill your practical assignments. Um, that means, for example, um, seeing these presentations. So you can have an idea of what is missing and what you need to finish please have a look to our feedback table that is in this link here. The assessment criteria uh, for this course are based on se several tasks. One is group assignments, four. Uh, another one is individual reading assignments, five. And another one is uh, submitting a report and present and defend your, uh, your um, analytic overview. Participation is part of the assessment as well, and it depends on how well you, you have done your group assignments, reading assignments, and report and presentation. In previous sessions, we learned how we, why we need to evaluate, what are the main evaluation concepts regarding usefulness, usability, and user experience, what focus we, we should do in the evaluation process, what are the metrics, how to choose the metrics, how to develop the evaluation protocol, how to choose the object that we are evaluating, and, and how to implement this evaluation procedure or, or, um, or guide that we built, and then analyze the report. In sum, we mainly look at the product and the service and we assess and we evaluate how users perceive this pro uh, pro product and how users behave towards this product. We focus first in low fidelity prototypes where um, the metrics and methods for evaluation are more qualitative based uh, metrics. And now we are moving forward to high fidelity prototypes where we have a data collection that is more quantitative, that focus on more issues, more um, problems and trying to fix uh, eventual problems uh, in, in, your, in your product. We also learn, and this is an important aspect, that evol the evaluation procedure or planning, how you are going to collect the data, what are your research questions, and what you want to focus on, it's a very important step. Um, the, the, it's true when they say garbage in, garbage out. So if you don't plan correctly, then it, it's more likely that you don't collect the, the exact uh, data that can answer to your research questions. So planning, piloting is are an important aspect of this procedure, uh, user research procedure, of course, and, they, uh, and evaluation the experience of the users. Today, 
Today, I'm going to focus on reflecting on the methods and, and trying to sum up more or less the key takeaways that you should take from this course. So we have the psychometrical self-reporting metrics. Those are mainly questionnaires that are designed and validated to measure perceptions of the user, what they think and what are their experience when using a product. These psychometric scales or methods, for example, can be the system usability scale or attractive. These are the most common ones. Then there is other methods that aim not towards the user, users and understand how they perceive the experience to be, but are methods that you can use to ensure that the, your prototype or your design follows all the requirements and regulations that are needed to be usable. For example, these issue-based metrics um, like the Nielsen Tenuristics. But before, let's go to to uh, some 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 of key aspects that you need to take from this course. As as I told you before, low fidelity prototype is to it's more related with concepts and understanding users' needs, and it's more qualitative based metrics or use more qualitative based metrics. It's not focused on evaluating so much the product problems or issues, but it's more focused on how the user think, how, what, we, what, what is the need for them to have a specific tool to help them in the activities. And this type of metrics, because they are more qualitative, what we use more is interviews or observation methods or data collection. And this requires, for example, that when analyzing the data, you do a thematic analysis and understand the ten main aspects to be addressed regarding the needs. On the other hand, when you move towards a more functional prototype or a product in the market, then the focus is not so much on how users thinks, uh, think or users' needs, but it's more how well they can use your product. So it's more on the functions of your product. Um, so you look for more errors, mistakes they do of what works and what doesn't work. You look for the test or the evaluation and the planning uh, should be more focused on tasks. That's why we use much more the task-driven uh, methods. I feel that prototype evaluation, uh, the most key uh, indicators are related with usefulness, so we focus on uh, understanding if the user find the prototype useful. Then we focus on the, the prototype usability. Usability has three main key attributes, efficiency, effectiveness, and satisfaction. If, if efficiency and effectiveness are related with to do, how the user do something. And satisfaction is more how the user thinks, what is the experience, the perception of using. how long that, uh, that the user takes to do the task and how many mistakes he does. That's why we use this, um, this strategy that represents a task-driven uh, approach where we um, assign three or four tasks to the user and we measure and we see how the user does the task. So it's more related with doing things using the product. Re uh, regarding user experience is more how do I think about it? What was my experience of using? So it's more um, something that you do after using the product. So your using experience is something that comes after or if 
you measure before is the expectations of the product. So what I think it will provide me and enable me to do. So these perceptions is, is something that is related with measures like satisfaction and emotional related measures like engagement, enjoyment. And this perception of use, usage is usually uh, measured through observation, facial expressions, for example, or measured through um, um, questionnaire self-reporting metrics uh, or interviews so when I ask what was the experience, how do I think. So in terms of usability metrics, um, efficiency is focused on how quickly can users perform the tasks and how fast. So we measure the time. Satisfaction is more how they think, how they perceive the feelings and opinions. So usually we use interviews, questionnaires and, and, um, and capture thoughts. Or usually to measure satisfaction we also use um, a ranking. So we can use a Likert scale ranking or we can use these emotional um, uh, scales like the smiles. So, performance metrics like efficiency and effectiveness can be measured with, uh, with, uh, with time to task. Check the, times, the time that it, the user uh, needs to finish the task, the effort, count mouse clicks and uh, the, the movements. We can also measure time success and number of errors. Usually, the way we report uh, usability metrics is based on issues. Those issues can be classified by level of severity, low, moderate, medium, or high. Now let's discuss the strategy, how to plan, what to take into consideration, when to evaluate, if before, after, or during, what metrics, what usability scales shall they use, and so on. Now, others, we are aware that evaluating a product is much more than just evaluating its efficiency, effectiveness, or satisfaction. A good product evaluation depends much on how I design the protocol and what are my goals. What scales do I use? If I use questionnaires, what I want to measure, the behaviors or the perceptions of the experiences. It depends much on the methods that are available and how I collect the data and how I interpret the data. Choosing the right metrics can be a challenge. Design the protocol it can be also a challenge. That's why we are practicing, training, and the experiment with different methods and methods uh, and metrics so we can understand when and how to use them and what are our goals, objectives, and purpose. 